Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode, we are going to take a look and do a solo play, method number one. I intend to make a second video at some point, but we're going to do a solo play here, a brand new game that literally came out not even a week ago yet, Europe in Turmoil, Prelude to the Gate, Great War, designed by Chris Van Buren. I hope I pronounced that right, and published by Compass Games. All right, now, <clears throat> as most of you know, I'm basically a solitaire player, except for the games that my wife will play with me. That's pretty much what I do. So, Stuka Joe, of course, as I mentioned before and have mentioned on uh, Board Game Geek website, uh, has a very good solitaire method that is used for card-driven games. I still need to read the specific rules for games that have scoring cards like Twilight Struggle because, of course, Europe and Turmoil is very much a Twilight Struggle-esque game. Um, but right now, to learn the game, to kind of get a feel for it, what I'm doing is what I like to call the two-card uh, solo method. So basically, what you're going to see me do in this playthrough is I'm going to go back and forth between the two sides, the authoritarian and the liberals, and basically flip two cards face up. And then each time I will choose one of the two cards to be my active card and the card I'm going to play for the turn. Okay. Now, the game here is basically all the political maneuvering crisis uh, events that went on between um, or before the Great War, uh, all that time period that I enjoy a lot between the end of the Franco-Prussian War and the outbreak of the First World War, because of course Germany is unified here in the game, and one of the scoring regions. A lot of the terminology here, for those of you familiar with Twilight Struggle, you will recognize it. Uh, you will recognize a lot of things here. Uh, there are a few changes that are interesting, applicable to the time period, that kind of thing. So, rather than me babbling on here, let's go ahead and let's get into it. So I'm on turn five. We've started the Edwardian period. And currently, our score stands at, because we got our score track over here, stands at negative seven for the authoritarian side, which the last thing I just did at the end of turn four was a scoring card on France. And the liberals just beat down the authoritarians in France pretty bad and were able to make a shift of 7 VP to push it back there. If you look over here too, one of the key things here in the game is the tension track, which can unleash the Great War. So you want to keep an eye on that as well too, um, given everything that's going on here at this point in time. So, alright, we'll keep an eye on that as gameplay develops. So, here we go. Alright, so the authoritarians always go first. So let's get moving here, and the first card that I'm going to draw here for the authoritarians to make my two choices here. Ah, well, what do you know? We got our two options here. Our control of the channel, and uh, my friend Josef Pilsudski. Being a Polish heritage, I know all about Mr. Pilsudski. Okay. Now the cards again will be very similar to what you've seen in Twilight Struggle. Some of the cards are events for one side, like the blue is the liberal. Some of them are split ones, like you see this two here. There's um, both yellow and blue. Okay. You have removable events. You can play it for ops. You can do all those things there. Okay. All right. So let's see. I got these two cards. Which one do I want to go with? first. Um, well, I could take Pilsudski because I don't want to lose Poland. I have control of Poland right now. Uh, let's do that. So the first thing I'll do, just to introduce this also, is I'm going to go ahead and play the Pilsudski card. So what I do for my own purposes of solitaire play is I go ahead and put the card in the middle like this once I've chosen it. And let's come over here to what I'm going to do with it. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> Major earthquake. And that is the naval race. Now, the naval race in this game is much like the space race in Twilight Struggle. Okay, it's basically the same kind of thing, although the naval race is uh, has a bigger impact on things, especially if you can get ahead of it. Okay, now each one of the spaces here on the naval race has a number. So you need to get that number or higher to move up the track. 
Okay, so when you do a naval race, you're going to take the ops value of the card, which the Pilsudski card is a three, and you're going to add it to a die roll. And if I can get seven or better, I'm going to move up to the next space on the track. And I rolled a two. So three and two is five, which of course is not going to get me to seven. Now you can also have different modifiers from cards or events that have happened, but unfortunately I don't have anything with that right now. If you fail in your attempt, then you turn your marker over to its plus one side, which will give you a plus one the next time that you do it. Generally speaking, you can only dump one card into the naval race per turn, and then uh, you can only do a second one if an event allows you to, uh, those sorts of things there too, okay? All right, another thing I just do here for my own purposes to help remind myself is I've got one die for each side, so I move it down here because playing solo, of course, sometimes you forget things, and I move that die down there to show me the authoritarians have gone ahead and done their naval race card here. So since I've done that naval race card, that will now get put into the discard pop. And of course, just like in Twilight Struggle with the space race, when you do that, it does not trigger off the event. All right, let's see. So the liberals, let's see what they have for their two cards here. All right, their two cards. Oh, look, it's Marks and Engels. Yippee, skippy. All right, so I can go that, but I also have this very nasty authoritarian card here. Now, I could move ahead on the naval races, the liberals, but let's see this march of history. So if I play this now, I get plus one op value for cards played by the liberal player for the rest of the turn. Or I could play it for three ops, naturally enough, too. Now, this card also has an asterisk after its event, which, of course, means that it is removed from the game if it's played as an event. All right, well... And of course, if you didn't um, pick up on it from what I was saying about the Pilsudski card, when you play a card, just like Twilight Struggle, that has your opponent's event on it, then you have to go ahead and um, trigger the event. Again, the player playing the card gets to choose whether they want to use the op points first or they want to trigger the event first. All right. Hmm. Now, playing this two solo card method, the problem is, of course, you never know what else is in the deck. I'm tempted to dump this one, the third department, the Okrana, into the naval race, but I don't know what else is in the deck. Hmm. Okay, what I think I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and play this March of History, but I'm going to go ahead and play it for, oh, well, just to demonstrate the game, I'll play it for support checks. Now, support checks are similar in concept to coups in Twilight Struggle, but there are some differences. First of all, every time you play a card as a support check, you get to do two, that's right, two support checks anywhere on the map. It cannot be the same space twice unless an event allows you to do that. Okay, right? so let me go ahead and let me zoom out here. Oops, wrong direction. And I'll just pick a couple of spaces here on the map to do my support checks in to try and push out authoritarian power. Okay. Uh, all right. So now support check, you have to have the opposing side has to have at least one strength point there. They don't necessarily have to have control of it. Okay. And the spaces that you control next to that space give you a plus one modifier to your total a minus one modifier for all the spaces that your opponent controls. So to demonstrate that, let's take a look at, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this with my first support check. I'm going to go into the belly of the beast. I'm going to go into Vienna right here. Okay. All right. There's Vienna. Now, you double the number, just like in Twilight Struggle, three times two is six. So that is the number you're trying to get above. Okay. Now we're going to zoom back here a little bit to show you all the spaces that are next to it here. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the liberal die, and then we'll start doing our math. So here we go. Oh, it's a one. That's not very good for them. Okay. So one plus three from the card, that is a four plus one for every space that they control next to Vienna. So four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So that's going to give a total of eight. But we're now going to subtract one, two, three for the three authoritarian spaces. So eight minus three is five. Five is less than six. So wah, wah, no luck. Thanks for playing. Here's some nice party gifts for you. Turtle wax for a shinier turtle. All right. So that didn't work out so well. Let's see. For my second support check, and again, I can't do the same space twice, so I can't do Vienna again. Um, <laughs> you know what? Now the Bosnia has been annexed, which is down here, the Bosnia space. Right there. Now that that's happened, I'm going to go ahead and try to push out support for the authoritarian player. Basically because at this point, Bosnia now counts as a space both in scoring for the Austrian card as well as the Balkans card. So that's the scoring regions in the game, by the way, are the Balkans, Austria-Hungary, France, Germany, and the Russia. Okay, those are the scoring cards that you have in the game here. So here we go again, I'll roll the dice. Now part of the reason I'm choosing this, if you notice, is I have a lot of spaces that are controlled by liberal powers. Actually, all the spaces around are controlled by liberal powers. So I'm just basically going to try and muscle out that authoritarian stuff and get that over with. So I rolled a die. This time we hit a five. So five and three is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 to six is a difference of six. So I can yank out three authoritarian for three. I'll put three more in. For the liberal side, which would jump me all the way to six, because I already had three there. Woo! And that is basically going to almost be locked down for the rest of the game. Okay. And this is a battleground space. If you notice, you have the two colors there. The different symbols on the spaces here, this is an intellectual and this is an annex space, are related to other activities and events in the game. And we'll get to that as needed. Okay. Now, I played this for the ops, so this will go into the discard pile. All right, and now we're on to the second turn, or the second round of turn five. All right, so let me see what two cards I'm going to get here, this time for the authoritarians. So, oh, have liberals gain power in the UK. Ah, whoo! Well, that's nasty, and I already used up my naval race. Ah, that's a bummer, man. All right, I really don't want to do this, because if you look at this here, I mean, look what this does. One liberal strength point in government spaces per scoring region. Now that's deadly because just like Twilight Struggle, if the opponent controls a space, if you're just putting ops in, it costs you two ops to put in a space that's controlled by the opponent. But when it comes to events like this, you just get to put them in. So that's a big problem. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hold on to that for the time being. Yeah, because that's just deadly. And I'm going to go ahead and play control the channel, but I will do it for the ops because I'm not ahead on the naval track at all. So I can do it for ops or I can do it for support checks, but I think I will do it for ops. So I'm going to go ahead and again, like Twilight Struggle, you must either have influence already in the space if you're placing for ops or have a space that's adjacent to it to place influence, no bridge building. Um, you know, you can't place it like one space next to um, well, like, I'll show you here. So, like, let me just zoom in because I'm about to put it on Kaiser Wilhelm anyway, so to speak. Um, so here's Kaiser Wilhelm. So I can't, like, put it in Berlin and then put it into East Prussia, that kind of bridge building, okay? Um, because that's just, that's not permitted there. So I'll put one point here, which will put Wilhelm back under my control because that will give me five which is equal to his total, and of course that's also a battleground state, and Germany scoring will come eventually. With my second point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build Vienna back up to three. Okay, Now, that's significant because earlier in the game I had played Franz Ferdinand for an event. Okay, So, uh, while Vienna and Budapest are under authoritarian control, tension cannot rise higher than Three. So now i got to move the tension marker back down to 3 because it cannot go any higher than that. I think that's how that would work. Um, I mean, that's how I'm reading this. I haven't seen any clarification on it. I should probably ask on BoardGameGeek. But that is, um, 
Yeah, it cannot rise higher than three. So if it's already at five, does that mean it goes back down to three? I would think so. That seems to be the, the case. So, all right. So that card is played. It goes into the discard pile. All right. The liberal side. Let's see. Who now the liberals have two bad choices. They have the Tangier Crisis as well as the third department. Mm. All right. Let's see. All right, but tension can't go up by more, cannot go above three right now because it is controlled. Franz Joseph, or Franz Ferdinand rather, is in the game at the moment. All right, so you know what? I am going to play this Tangier Crisis and I will play it for the ops. All right, I'll let the event go first. So the event here, basically, so the little player can choose. Either lose three victory points, I don't think that's such a hot idea, or the authoritarian player places two SP on the French Armed Forces base. Well, they already control that, so that's not such a big deal, although that means it's going to be awfully hard to ever get that space back. But, you know, hey, I mean, let's face it, military is usually conservative anyway, so. All right, so that will take it up to six. All right. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold the phone. It's already controlled. So any space in France, so I can put two strength points, any space in France. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the colonial space, which already has two on it, and add my two to there, which will give me control of that battleground space. All right. Okay. Increase tension by one. Well, I can't. It says here tension cannot rise higher than three because Franz Ferdinand is in effect. Okay. And I have both... Vienna and Budapest is under authoritarian control. However, I can make a crisis roll. Now, a crisis roll basically works this way. You have your tension track over here. And on the tension track, you've got a couple of things going on. First of all, you have the tension track itself, which is numbered 0 through 6. That's the number you're going to add to your die roll, which is a 3 here for this particular crisis check. Okay. So, 3 plus 3 is 6. Now, you're going to go up here and subtract whatever is the leftmost uncovered space on the Great War status track, which is negative 3 right now. So, 6 minus 3 is 3. Now, if the total ever is 7 or higher, the Great War breaks out, and then you have the process you can do to resolve it, either what the rulebook originally says, which basically is going through regions and removing scoring points or strength points and stuff like that, or there is an alternative mobilization uh, procedure, which I have not done anything with yet. Okay, so... This crisis failed, so there is no great war breaking out. So that is the end of that. All right, now the liberal player will have his three ops to use. So let's see. Now, with the three ops, should I go and try to grab control of some more spaces? Or should I try some support checks here? Hmm, that's a good question. Or, since I'm kind of ahead here with the, with the Liberals, although the points there, the Liberals are starting to really get a good grip on things, should I go ahead and try to knock down Budapest and Vienna if I can and try to see if I can get tensions to rise um, once again? Um, I don't know, because then the authoritarian player can put points back, but then again, he's wasting time doing that when he could be putting points elsewhere. Um... You know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this straight up for the ops. And I'm going to go ahead and add three points, or two points, I should say, into Belgium up here, or into the Netherlands up here, which will give me control of the Netherlands. Now, the Netherlands is an independent space and helps you with your scoring by giving you a plus one um, whenever you score spaces that are adjacent to a region that's being scored. And I got one point left. Um, Let's take that last point and let's continue to keep France locked down by getting Bordeaux under control. So the event was played, so it goes in the discard pile, and now we're on to round three. All right, now 
Let's see. Ah. What's the new card for the authoritarian player? Oh, great. Now there are two liberal cards. I have Jean Jarez and I have Liberals Green Power. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play that one. I'm going to play the, the Jarez card. Um, because of what it is, and I'll let the event go first. So the tension is reduced by one, so the tension track goes down to two. Okay. For the rest of the game, whenever a crisis roll will be made, liberal player may lose one VP to reduce the tension by one. Cannot be played after Raul Villain blow. That's already um, happened, so we don't have to worry about that. But this is an event that is permanent now and ongoing, so we'll place that by the liberal player as a reminder. And now I've got two ops to work with here. Um, okay, the situation in France is getting pretty rough, but what I'd like to do is start fighting back in other places. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two ops, and I'm going to go ahead and put them into Belarus and take control of that for the authoritarian player. All right, so the liberal player now. Oh, once again, they have two authoritarian cards. <laughs> Both sides seem to get all the events of their opponents. So, Prince Heinrich and the Third Department. Hmm. I could dump that into the naval race because I haven't done the liberal naval race yet this turn. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this card here and I'm going to dump it into the naval race. So, three plus die Three plus six is nine. Nine is greater than seven on the naval track. So the British move up to the Kaiser class. Okay, the first player to reach this box gains two victory points. So the authoritarian victory point total falls from seven to five. And this gets dumped into the discard pile because it was put into the naval race to not trigger off the event. Okay, fourth action round. Holy cow, seriously. It's another liberal card. I got two liberal cards again. Alright, so I've got Culture Conf. I really don't want to give this liberals game power in the UK business. Because that really, really will hurt. And I don't know if there's any scoring cards hanging around. I'd rather save that for the next time I do a naval attempt. So I guess we'll play Culture Conf. All right, and I'll let them do the event first. Okay, two support checks in intellectual or church spaces. Uh, funny thing is the liberals have control of most of the church spaces that exist. That's kind of weird. The French one's out of the game already with an event that's been played. Or intellectual, use an option value of the card. Cancel modifier for any adjacent spaces controlled by the authoritarian player. Okay, so we're looking for spaces that have the pencil or that have the church. Hmm. Not too many authoritarian ones that have the authoritarian points in ones that have the pencil or the church. Uh, but there is the German one up here in Hanover Oldenburg. So we'll make that our first one. Okay. So we'll roll the die. So we got three. Um, three and three is six. Versus the two that's there, which is four. So six to four, but plus one for the Netherlands because they control the space next to it there. So that actually goes up to plus three. So that kicks out one of the authoritarian points and puts two, giving the liberals control of the church in northern Germany. All right, so now the second one, I have to see if there's an authoritarian space that has a liberal pencil on it. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think the authoritarians, let's see. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I feel like the two-headed monster on uh, the uh, Sesame Street. Nope, 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 because I really don't. I don't. Okay, so there isn't a space. 
Well, there is Viennese, Viennese succession. That would be kind of a little overkill, but you'd always have that space next to Vienna. Okay, we'll do that one there. So, we die. One and three is four. Uh, let's see, plus nothing. So that's four to two. That's a difference of two. So we can remove the one authoritarian piece out of there. And then we'll bump up to three, the Viennese succession issue. Which basically means, you know, it's an issue. It's a space there. Because this is a little different than, of course, Twilight Struggle in that respect. All right, so now I get three points to play as the... I got three ops somehow I want to play. I'm going to go ahead and do two support checks. I'm going to try and see if I can muscle some of these spaces out of the way of the opponents here, of the liberals, and get some of this. So the first one I'm going to try and do up in St. Petersburg. Well, that's kind of problematic, isn't it? Because you want to be looking for spaces that you got a lot of support around. That would be much better. One, two, three, three versus one. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to do Alsace-Lorraine over here. Okay, because I have three authoritarian spaces that are next to it versus only one for the liberals. So I roll my die. Good roll. Five and three is eight. Eight, nine, ten, eleven versus six, which is the doubled value. Uh, let's see, eleven versus six, seven. So that is a difference of four. So I will be able to kick out all three points from Alsace-Lorraine of the Liberals, and put one authoritarian point into Alsace-Lorraine. Excellent. All right, second space I'm going to choose. I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. I'm trying to choose another space that's got a lot of authoritarian spaces near it, but not too many liberal spaces. That's the trick of this particular um, kind of thing. Like Paris right now, the way Paris is surrounded by liberal spaces, that would not be a good space to choose. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Ukraine over here. So, roll my die. It's a four, plus three is seven. Seven, and I have two authoritarian spaces, seven, eight, nine. So that's nine to four. Five, nine to five, so that's a difference of four. So all three get kicked out of the Ukraine, and one point is left for the authoritarians to stick into them. All right, and now this card goes into the discard pile. It's not a removable event, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, liberals fourth turn. Whew, they got another authoritarian card. Wow, they got government sponsored art came out. All right. Let's see, one authoritarian SP in each intellectual space. Whoa, that's pretty heavy. Except Bosnia and Siberia, whoa. So that would be a way to really get them into there. They've already done their naval race card, so they can't dump it. Um, well, you know what, Germany is not ahead on the naval race card, so we're gonna go ahead and play the Prince Heinrich card as the liberals, and we'll trigger the event first. So it's playable only if Germany Navy is ahead on the naval arms race track. Authoritarian player gets one VP for each space they are ahead. So let me just double check here and make sure that um, here we go. Yep, but it still would be triggered off. So from my understanding here in the rules. So that will happen and it'll have no effect at all. And I got two ops to spend as the liberals. All right. So with those two ops. Hmm. Two ops, two ops, two ops. Now as the game goes on, it gets harder and harder to place things here. Basically, I've noticed you're going to start drifting towards more and more support checks. So, But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take my two points and put them in Berlin to try and get control of that. All right, now we're on to round five of turn five here. All right. Uh, here we go. Finally, an authoritarian card in the authoritarian hand. Uh, 
To use an authoritarian controlled army space, I can place one authoritarian SP in each adjacent space. Well, let's see. Imperial army. Well, that could come in handy. Actually, that would probably be a good space. Okay, I will go ahead and play this. And I will use it over here with the Imperial Army. All right, so I can place one where the Hanover Church space is, which will now push that out of the Liberal player's control. And I can put one more with Wilhelm, which will basically help lock him down even more, take him up to a six, which is awesome. Alsace-Lorraine, I will now move up to two authoritarian points, which is also excellent. Excellent, all right. And then into Belgium, I will also boost myself up to two, getting me closer to controlling that country as the game progresses here. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. All right, liberal card. Let's see. Oh, another authoritarian one for them. Yikes. Let's see. Ah, Government-sponsored art is a killer. Each intellectual space. That really could throw off the control in spaces here. Okay, relocate up to authoritarian SP from farmer army spaces to government spaces in the same scoring region. All right, I'll go ahead and play this as the liberals, and I'll let them decide first. So my authoritarian hat on here, I can relocate. Relocating is always tricky business. Um, we're in the same region, but see, I don't want to lose control of the army in a lot of these regions. That's the problem. I'm just going to forego it then, and then the liberals will get their three victory, victory three ops points to use. And let's see, three points. Um. Hmm, well, still trying to fight their way in. Okay, you know what? So, still trying to fight our way into Germany because Germany scoring will come eventually, I'm sure. So, we'll go ahead and put a two into there. That's one of the three points. We'll bring Berlin up to a three. That's two of the three points. And I will put one more point into the church space there, which will now bring that back under the liberal control. Okay, so we're all up to round six. All right, now, what I'm going to do here is just to see if I have a scoring card uh, for either side. And I don't have one for the authoritarians. So I'm just going to pick um, one of these cards. And then let me see if... My liberal side has a scoring card. It does not either. Shoot. I was hoping to show you guys a scoring card. Um, so maybe what I'll do next time around is I'll make sure there's a scoring card in there just to show you how that uh, breaks down, how that works. Of course, I guess I could go in the deck and alter that, but I am kind of enjoying playing this game. So I won't do that. So I'll tell you what I will do is this. I will go ahead and end this video here because I know I've been going for a little bit. But again, just wanted to show you what the basic gameplay is like. Uh, you got a chance to see a crisis roll, uh, but not a scoring card. So uh, we'll try to make sure that that happens for the next video, which the next video will more than likely be using Stuka Joe's method um, that he has once I get a chance to read that part of it. So my first impressions of this, just to kind of close this video out, is favorable. Uh, I like it. Um, it is interesting, the whole Crisis and Great War um, status track is very interesting to me. So I am looking forward to giving this some more plays uh, as time goes by. But right now my initial knee-jerk to this is, uh, is very favorable. And the support check thing is very interesting. I can see how the game can kind of get to a point where it's a battle between events and support checks as you try to struggle to control these areas once you get influence placed into them and such. Sometimes it's hard to squeeze that. Uh, I need to check on the Franz Ferdinand card, but I think I am playing that correctly. That's something I'll have to post as a question. So there you have it. Um, the better part of turn five. We did five action rounds there to give you an idea of how this new game is playing. For those of you who like Twilight Struggle, 
see if you would maybe like to pick this up because again it is a very very similar format so this has been tim Korchnoy from bare bones wargaming saying i will see you next time from this same game board on this same table but um, i'll be using stupid joe's method to kind of show you how that works for those of you that are are interested in attempting that solo method so thanks for watching see you next time